Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a while. Um, in my last video I said, yeah, I'm not going to leave it that long till the next one. And then it was three months later. So consider it something of a mid-season hiatus. At least that's how I'm looking at it. Um, actually, <laughs> I've been so busy the last three months that in my mind, uh, New Year's was only last week. As opposed to three months ago. But anyway... What I've got today is, I posted this image that I took a while ago, um, it was the aftermath of a storm, and I posted this on Instagram, and got quite a few likes, and a few people have asked me, how did I manage to get the look in this image? And I thought, you know what, that would actually make quite a good and interesting video, so here we are. So, this is the photo that I'm talking about, uh, let me just jump into full screen here so you can get a better picture of it. Um, this was, it was the aftermath of a storm and this is Dublin Bay and you can see it's quite moody and dramatic. We've got the interesting light from the clouds here. You've kind of got this nice silhouette in the background and you've got this kind of dramatic uh, water breaking here. So I shot this on my Fuji XE4, which is actually filming me right now. Um, and uh, originally it was in color so let me show you how this image started off. So this was the um, this was the original file unedited, and what I did was I did some basic tweaks in Lightroom, and then I took it from there into SilverFX Pro and did the black and white conversion and the final changes in in there. So let me go through it step by step, and uh, you can see my process for this. So I'm going to hop into the develop module. This was the original uh, straight out of the camera. Um, and if we zoom in here, we can see it is almost black and white as it is. And that was just kind of the very kind of stark light that was there, which kind of works and brings up some of the details. So the first thing I did was I did some kind of preliminary uh, edits in Lightroom. So let me kind of show you what I did. So I just I brought down the highlights a bit uh, just kind of bring in some more of this detail up here and then it was kind of getting a bit dark so I just brought exposure just a tiny bit um, and then I brought up the shadows like so maybe to about here yeah and then uh, what else did I do? Uh, the clarity brought the clarity a little bit so I want to go there and that just kind of makes some more of this detail here. Um, and then the other thing I did was I brought up the dehaze of it. So the dehaze, this isn't really what the dehaze is for. I'm not trying to get rid of this haze in the background or anything like that. Um, I found that it's like it almost adds contrast to the black areas sometimes. And in an image like this, it can add a kind of a, almost a nice rich texture to it, um, which is what I've done here. Okay, so scrolling down. Uh, I think the only other thing I did really was add some vignette to it and that's because I wanted to kind of draw your focus to kind of this area here so you can see the wave here is almost forming a nice circle so I kind of wanted to focus on that so we'll just bring this down and you can see <laughs> it's remembered the settings because I did this earlier so yeah so that's kind of the settings I did I have for my postcraft vignette so this was kind of where we are in uh, with just Lightroom. And at that, even at that, if I go to full screen here for a second, you can see this is actually a pretty good image as it is. And I could have just gone with that, but I was looking at it and I thought, you know what, this would actually make quite a good black and white. Um, I, I figured that um, Silver Effects Pro sometimes can give you really nice kind of rich black and white images. So I thought I'd try it and that's what I did. And that's how I ended up with the image. So let me hop over to Silver Effects Pro and show you what I did there. So we're going to go edit in and then Nick 6 Silver Effects. So here is our image in Silver Effects Pro and this is just like the straight conversion. So what I usually do is um, there's a whole bunch of presets in Silver Effects Pro and I usually use one of them as a starting point because they're actually quite good. So what I went with with this one was the push process, um, which is plus 1.5. And as you can see straight away, that looks really cool. Um, but there's a bit more we could do to it because we want to kind of bring out some more details in the sea and maybe kind of enhance the sky a bit more as well. So I'm probably not going to get this exactly the same as I did with the other one, but we'll we'll get it in the ballpark. Okay, so 
uh, I don't really need to do much to um, the kind of over global adjustments here. I might maybe just bring up the midtones a bit, just kind of bring in back some detail here in the C. And we can try the amplifier whites. Again, it brings a bit more detail, but what we really want to do is um, do these on kind of more of a selective um, basis. So we're going to use some of the selective tools for that. So I'm going to just jump straight down here for these. Um, do, 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 do. Where are we? Come back up. Ooh, scrolling's gone a bit wonky. Okay, so I'm first going to uh, use a control line, and what we want to do is just kind of bring up the sky a bit more. So I just drag that down like that. So a control line in Silverfax Pro is kind of like a gradient, but it also has a key attached to it. So it will key off whatever um, point you have under. So if I turn on the mask here, or view mask, okay, you can see what we're getting as the actual mask. Um, and if you want to straight up grad, what you can do is just decrease the luminance key like that. And as you can see now, it's a straight up grad, but we're going to leave it because it kind of adds a bit more uh, interest to it for the moment. So I'm going to turn the mask back off. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to bring up the structure a bit in the clouds, just kind of bring up some some more of the oomph. I might actually bring this down so we're getting more of the sky in. Okay, and let's see what else will we do. Try to amplify blacks. Yeah, that's quite nice. And maybe so amplify whites as well. So we're getting an almost godlike effect here going on. Um, and then I might, we don't want it too much. Although that kind of works. I do find it maybe uh, getting a little dark up here in the corner. So I can try with the tonal production and bring the shadows back up a bit. Maybe just bring the shadows up a bit like so. Okay, that's not too bad because I don't want this going totally to black. Um, Okay, so the next thing I want to do now is bring up some of the C. So for this, I'm just going to use a control point. So again, add a point here, and we're going to increase the radius of this. And again, I want to bring up the structure, and I'm going to amplify the whites on this. And I'm going to add some contrast as well. So we're bringing up more of the waves here. And sometimes you can get a different effect by it if you just like slightly drag around. That's not too bad. And then I'm going to add another control point, uh, maybe over here. And again, just increase this a little bit. And we're going to again add some structure. So again, that's just kind of bringing up some of the texture in the scene. It just makes it put that a little bit more dramatic. Okay, and then over here we want another one, but this time we want to kind of... Uh, amplify the whites again. Amplify the blacks. So we've got this kind of dramatic effect going on and I am going to just bring back the highlights this much because again we don't kind of over saturate. So I'm going to go back over to this one because I'm still not 100% happy with this and I'm just going to tweak the brightness a little bit because I want this to really stand out. This is kind of the key and um, this is kind of the key feature of the whole image and it's kind of what draws the whole image together. Bring up our contrast a bit more. And I might actually, if I drop down this key a bit, it'll bring more of this in to this effect. Okay, so let's just see what that looks like. So there's before. It's quite dull and flat. And there's after. For after. So just to kind of see what else we can do. We can add a bit more of a vignette into this as well. Just to, again, focus the image but I don't want to do too much because we already added quite a strong vignette in Lightroom so 
Okay, so there we have it. Um, and if again, we'll do one more before and after. So there's before and there's after. I think that's looking pretty good. So let's just apply this and send it back to Lightroom. Um, just a note again, if you're uh, new to Silverflex Pro, if you see down here, you have this non-destructive edits. So what that will do is save the information so you can reopen this and continue, continue where you left off if you need to. So I'm just going to apply. And the moments of truth <laughs> to see how close we got it to the original. Okay, so I think that's pretty close. Let's have a look. So there's the one we just did. And so there's the one we just did. And there's the original. Okay, so ours is a little darker, but you get, it's not too far off it. But that was kind of the general process that I went to with um, when making the image. So if I pop over to the print module, and print. So you can see when we put this against the white background, it actually looks pretty cool. So yeah, there we have it. Um, and that is how I used Silverfax Pro and Lightroom to create this dramatic seascape. Um, I hope you found this useful. If you do, please like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.